Hey guys, we are here with another Artsy Trio video. This month, this is our mood board that we are going to work from and are inspired by. Um, if you want a copy of said mood board, I've got to put my reading glasses on, sorry. If you want a copy of said mood board, um, and it's by Bea Grubb, um, then you can join our Facebook group, um, RT Trio Facebook group. I'll put the link down in the video description along with the videos from Bea and my other co-teacher for this uh, monthly mood board challenge, uh, Mike Deacon. Um, this mood board is really interesting and it really inspires me to um, paint. Um, there is images I could or would normally use for still life inspiration. There's texture inspiration and of course the color palette. So of course, as per usual, we've got our journal here where I do my art experiments in, and um, we are gonna do, of course, another one. Um, got a ways to go, I need to fill this journal up. But anyway, we're gonna do the painting, I think this side on the white side rather than the colored side. And we're gonna use the uh, gray paper here um, to put our mood board on and to do our notes, notes on it. So, first thing we should probably do is glue the mood board down. So I'm just going to use a Yoohoo glue stick, which is a, what I normally use. Um, and let's get this glued down over here. Slightly off camera, but you get the idea. Okay, so that now is glued down and I won't be tempted to misplace it <laughs> because that's a thing. Okay, so there's our page we're going to work on. I do have a particular idea in mind. I went to my paints. These are my uh, matte acrylic paints from Dick Blick and I chose these colors based on the uh, mood board. These are what I was inspired to pull based on the mood board. So we're going to use these on this page and I am going to tape off sort of a frame with some washi tape. I have a love-hate relationship with painting this way because sometimes the tape does not pull cleanly, but if you all have tried this before, you know that. And yeah, then we have things like that that happen. So we'll just stick that there. Um, but I have found better success with warming up the tape with the heat gun or a hair dryer or something. Seems to work a little bit better. This washi tape might be a little too sticky, but let's hope it doesn't ruin the paper and that it comes off well. Oops. I'm not sure why I bought this tape to be honest with you, other than I like the texture of the writing and stuff on the tape, but the orange color is just not me, but I've got it, so let's use it. Okay, so now, now we've got the edges taped off, so in theory, when we finish our artwork, then that should leave a nice border or a frame. In theory, I mean, you know. Try to have it semi-straight, is that straight? I guess so. All right, so now, I guess I should. I need a, a color palette. I did grab a variety of brushes that I used for these painting experiments, um, including one makeup brush. And I guess I need a palette to put some paint on, so hang on. This is one of the things I use as a palette, one of many, unfortunately, I have a hoard. But anyway, this is just a white ceramic soap dish from Doll the dollar store. Works just great. So we're gonna put a little bit of each color in here, I think. Oh. Maybe not each color. So we're going to put some of this color, which is white. We're going to put some of this one, which is green, blue, light. And I'm going to put some of this one, which is blue medium. And I've already got paint on my fingers and we haven't even gotten started yet. But you know, it's the way it goes, right? Okay. So now I'm going to take down just a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to take a really big brush. This is a really big, this is a folk art 
uh, plaid one and a half inch flat brush. I'm going to get it damp in some water so it's not completely dry. And I'm going to put all three colors on the brush, at least in theory. And we're going to start on the tape and go across to the other tape, back and forth. Hopefully we get a nice clean edge. I don't always manage that when I do this, but we'll see. You're going to just keep doing this until you have something that you like. A variety of colors streaking across the page. I seem to be using this technique a lot lately for different kinds of projects. That's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to give that a dry. dry or mostly dry and we are going to add some of this yellow to our palette. This is, what color is this? Yellow orange light. If it'll come out of the bottle. There we go. And I think we'll wait on the green yet. I'm going to use the, I'm gonna, we're gonna try the makeup brush. I'm gonna dip it in both the yellow and the white. And then we're gonna, again, start on the tape. I have a baby wipe in my hand. I know you're all like wondering, where is she going with this? You'll see. You can get these style of makeup brushes on Amazon. They're pretty cheap and they're fun to paint with and or ink with. Okay, I'm gonna take a, this is another folk art brush. They are my favorite brush brand. This is their scruffy brush. This is a half inch. Donna Dewberry for folk art. Who remembers her? Let me grab a little bit of the white. Maybe a teeny tiny bit of the blue, the lighter blue. And I'm doing circular motions. Okay, I might take my baby wipe and blend some of that out. I don't want to blend it all out because I kind of like some of the marks that the uh, makeup brush made. and the green. Have the, just the lids. I don't think you can see because I'm off camera, but I just have just the lids because I really don't need much paint for this. And I'm gonna Live in a place where you get a really interesting colored sunsets 
and it just seems like there's just a giant rainbow in the sky. You'll know exactly where I'm going with this. I don't know why that's what I thought of when I saw Bea's uh, mood board. No idea. <laughs> but that is immediately where my brain went to. I live in the Pacific Northwest and we have some beautiful stormy skies that go on quite a bit. And they're just beautiful to see. That'll give you a hint about where I'm going with this. Don't be afraid to like, oh, I can't add more color. What if I mess it up? Just let it go. Just do it. You can always add more layers of paint later. So I also have these other two sort of stiff bristle, bristled scruffy brushes that I pulled. I think we're gonna try the softer one of the two. I don't know. This is the stippler. I don't know the brand name because though the paint on the brush handle is peeling off because I'm really tough on my brushes, just FYI, in case you didn't know that already. So I'm just gonna keep layering my paints and making marks until I like what's going on. And once you like it, stop and let it dry. Here's my skinny round brush. So I'm going to grab the white paint and whatever else is on the brush, if it's some of the pink or the green, well, that's fine. Then I'm gonna just use the white paint that's on my palette. And I'm twisting the brush and I'm not touching it very strongly to the paper. I'm using it Pretty light touch. <sighs> you can see the paint. If you're paying attention, you can see the paint coming off my brush handle onto the page. I keep having to blow it away. Okay, so we're gonna stop there. I am going to um, dry this and while I'm drying it and the adhesive on the tape is heating up, I will pull the tape off. Okay. I have some birds here that I uh, punched out of a punch or a die that I have. I have black ones and gray ones. I'm kind of feeling the gray with its wings outspread. Do I want to just put one? I think one big one and a couple of little ones. And then I have a word here that I printed um, with my inkjet printer onto some fabric a long time ago and it is ironed to a piece, ironed to a piece of butcher paper um, and then I cut it out. And if I'm going to use it in a stitching project then I take the butcher paper off but I think I'm going to just leave it because I'm going to put it down the way it is. 
um, glue stick. This is dry. I think it's dry. Let's give it one more shot with the heat gun. Okay. Put this in here. And the word. And then we will push it into the glue. Make sure they're good and stuck down. Nice. I love that. Make some notes on the other side about what colors that we used, and I'll be right back. Okay, there you go, there you have it. Your art journal pages and your creative experiments inspired by our, by our mood boards don't have to be complicated. Have fun with it, do what makes you happy, and use what you have. I love the way this one turned out. I think this might, might be one of my favorites. Anyway, that's it for today. Please go watch the other videos. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them down below. You can also go put a post in the Facebook Artsy Trio group, and you can tag one or more of us teachers in the post to make sure that we see it. Um, support the free content how you can uh, by checking out my video description, my social media, my Etsy shop, and all of that stuff is in my link tree list of links, which is down below, along with my happy mail address. I know the others have ways you can support their free content too. Please go check it out. I also have Patreon for those that don't know. And uh, yeah, above all, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye guys.